what's up guys it's your boy the fights back at it with another video but if it's your first time here definitely be sure to hit it hit hit that subscribe button leave a like leave a comment let me know what you guys think come join us on discord it's the best community ever come follow us on twitch that's where we stream live as well as on youtube and last but not least guys we do not have youtube monetization so if you want to support the channel check out that youtube description below we have a patreon link but we also have an etsy storefront link we have coffee mugs and t-shirts and more things on the way let's get into this content guys so today we are going to be discussing discussing our phantom knights deck if you've been watching us on stream or if you haven't uh you should definitely pop in one day we've been maining with our phantom knights deck we've been having a lot of fun with it and i felt like it would be a good time to actually talk about a breakdown about this uh this thing how does it work all the intricacies of it and the cards so you can kind of get an idea and then you could eventually build one yourself and have some fun with it so I'm going to put some video of gameplay afterwards. I'm not going to put the videos that we already put up, but if you haven't seen our videos of facing a blue eyes deck or our one shot kill that we've done with our Phantom Knights deck, definitely be sure to check those videos out. Uh, I don't want to put them on here on a rehash because I did do a full breakdown on those, but I will put at least two other videos of me playing with this deck so you guys would have uh, you know, a decent amount of gameplay to see what's going on. So. The first three cards that we have here are Max C. This is kind of normal meta right now where you want to prevent special summonings from the enemy. So if you see them starting to get ready to do some special summonings, you could do this. And by throwing this away, uh, basically, they will not be able to do special summons. If they do, you'll get a free card. They can negate this by using Coal by the Grave, which is a cool technique that you can do. We have one in our hand. Uh, you can stack another one but you would have to sacrifice one of these other cards along the process uh the next card that we do have here is junk forward this is a nice card to start out with if you don't have if you have it in your hand where basically if you have no monsters you can just throw this three star as a special summon just right off the cuff which is really cool um tour guide from the underworld is really amazing to work with with graph the mel branch any of the abyss cards here or a tour guard uh, guide itself i usually save those at the end when i don't have any more of these to spare where basically you can summon these cards and it takes away the effect that is actually harmful to it uh the harmful effect of these abyss cards is that if you just summon them normally and you have another monster on the field they actually blow up and just die and go to the graveyard but because you summon it by tour guide it takes any of the special effects of it and you can just throw it as another three star card which is really nice to to do so that's why i really do love these cards uh the next card is the kagemucha knight the kagemucha knight will be able to be special summoned if you throw another three star on the field and majority of our cards here are all going to be three stars there's only one th four star trap we have and then another um three star that we can convert to a four star or if we use the phantom knight of break sport break sword that if it gets destroyed by battle it can make two knights in the graveyard essentially four stars um so you can do some really cool techniques on making four star monsters but most of our deck is going to be three stars uh the the max c are two stars but we usually though use those for its special benefit so that's pretty much it now just kind of diving in a little further into the future of the flow of how you're supposed to like what's the normal process of playing a phantom knights deck the normal process is that you get two cards on the field then you summon cherubini cherubini is this it's an abyss monster uh when you summon this monster you can throw another monster in the graveyard um and then after that you can do some special summoning techniques to get another monster on the field to eventually get a third dark monster which it has to be a third dark monster in order to for for us to summon rusty so it's usually summon cherubini get a third monster on the field uh discard something to the graveyard come car, uh summon rusty then discard another card and then get uh, another trap card on the field and destroy one of the any enemy monsters I usually like doing this combination now that I'm later in the game. I like doing it if I'm on the second turn. I don't like doing it on the first turn 
Because the first turn, I mean, you can still do it. It's really good to put stuff in the graveyard because the way the Phantom Knight's deck works is that you try to get a lot of these monsters in the graveyard so you can actually start chaining and doing more summonings. But what I wanted to void, the reason I wanted to summon the, mention the summoning of Chirubini is that if you have Chirubini on the field, you already used your monsters. You can actively summon these monsters, the Abyss monsters, and they will not blow up and die. Because Cherubini is also an Abyss monster. So in the scenario of not having a monster, hypothetically, if you had these two monsters uh, in your hand and you wanted to summon them to summon, Cherub to summon Cherubini, you could do that. Uh, but if as soon as you start using one of the other monsters on these fields uh, and you didn't use a tour guide to bring them out, they will die because of their effects. So I wanted to kind of voice the little intricacy about these abyss monsters so what you can do is you can use your whatever combination you have summon chirubini and if you did have an abyss monster you can actively bring it out as the third monster to eventually summon rusty which rusty is a phantom knight and then when you do a phantom knight now you could actually special summon this phantom knights of silent boots because silent boots allows you to get a special summon them if you have a phantom knight monster on the field but let's continue going from left to right i kind of just wanted to t touch on cherubini because it, it's an abyss monster and the uniqueness of being able to utilize this now next one is this card right here the phantom knights of ancient cloak Phantom Knights of Ancient Cloak is really nice in the graveyard because it allows you to put another Phantom Knight monster in your hand. So usually, if I don't have a monster in the graveyard yet, I try to get Cherubini out and the first card priority I try to throw in is this card because I do want to put another card in my hand that would be able to summon or utilize and so on and so forth. Now, the next one is the one we kind of talked about, Phantom Knights of Silent Boost. You're able to special summon this monster if there's another Phantom Knights on a field, but also its graveyard effect, which is really important, is that you can basically banish this card from the graveyard, but then you can also get another trap card. And the trap cards we have here are these five right here. It's the Phoenix Wing, it's the Fog Blade, and then it's last but not least, the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigade. Brig Brigandine, yeah. I'm sorry about the names. I always forget these names. I actually know them by images at this point. You can basically banish this card and then get one of these cards in your hand. It's really nice to kind of have these. Uh, I, I will mention a combination with this, uh, this specific four star monster, but I'm going to wait till I get to the card that matters. So that's how you can use uh, Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. You could basically, so if you had Rusty out, you can special summon him just because he's out. If you had this card on the field, you would be able to special summon Silent Boots. If you had this card, special summon, so on, so on, so on, so on, and so on. So something really cool. Also, you could special summon it if you had this trap card that turns into a monster. Uh, because it's a Phantom Knight, you can also special summon Silent Boots because of that. So it's a very, this card has a lot of utility when it comes to, uh, to making our deck work. The next one is uh, the Phantom Knights of, I'm going to wait till it gets to the end, unless I can control click it, of Ragged Gloves. Now, this card is really nice. I usually use it to throw it into the graveyard as soon as possible. Um, I use the technique of banishing it in the graveyard to put another card in the graveyard so I could get more, more of the Phantom Knight cards inside there. Uh, mainly, I like using the combination of uh, throwing one of these in the graveyard if they don't exist already because whenever you, uh, you banish a Phantom Knight from the graveyard uh, it tells you right here it basically special summons once per turn which is really nice um you can use the effect of phantom knights of the torn skills once per turn so yeah it says it, it's it, they need to tab these out i really i've been uh voicing my frustration about like how the definitions can be tabbed out where it could be the warrior effect it could be the effect on the field it could be the graveyard effect and like each section you can tab if there's a a thing written about it uh so let's see let me see what it's i, I want to go to the actual wording so you guys can understand it uh 
and and the cool combination where, where since we're talking about it right now is that when you summon this you can discard one card that's in your hand if you had this card and you normal summoned it and you wanted to throw this card in the graveyard using its special ability, it's a good idea to do that. Um, so then you don't have to worry about doing any of that with Cherubini or Rusty Knight uh, because you don't you don't you don't really want to do that um, with those cards unless you need to because then you you can actually put other ones in the graveyard. You could put this one in the graveyard, which is a really nice choice. You could put this in the graveyard, which allows you to summon another phantom knight that's in the graveyard which is really cool um there's a few combinations you can kind of do uh but uh this card if you uh if you have it in the graveyard you can basically uh you can uh banish it and then put another one in the graveyard kind of like this one also if you use this as xyz material to summon uh the xyz material gets a thousand extra attack so when you would use it on like phantom knight of break sword as an xyz material like say i use the uh silent boots and i use the the phantom knights of uh of ragged gloves Basically, instead of having 2,000 attack, I would have 3,000 in this case, which makes it a pretty strong monster, um, which is really cool. So, yeah, it's really cool to kind of have this in the graveyard eventually. So when you do banish it with another monster, because you banished it, this card will get thrown on the field. But to look at the word of it, you can discard one card and send one Phantom Knight's card from your deck to the graveyard, except Phantom Knights of the Torn Scale. If another Phantom Knight's card in your graveyard is banished, while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon it. But it's banished when it leaves the field. So what I like to do is I like to get it on the field, and then I would like to use it for an XZ summoning right off the bat. It's a cool technique to kind of do so on and so forth. Next, we're going to talk about the Ash Blossom. This is kind of the typical meta. You kind of need to have these cards. Uh, it's just really good to negate effects that happen. Um, and usually these are for add a card from a deck to your hand, special summon from the deck, or send a card from the deck to the graveyard. And you can only use it once per turn. But it's good to have these in your hand. So if you do get them, you're able to stop the other players' uh you know combinations in their tracks uh then after that we have danger jackalope which works really well with uh uh tsuchinoko i think i said it right but basically you can activate this in your hand and what happens is when you activate it in your hand it's a random guessing game of which card is going to be discarded to the graveyard if they chose this card then it goes to the graveyard, you can activate it and special summon it. If it's another card that's selected, that card goes into the graveyard, you can special summon it and you get another card from the deck. So it's really nice to use this. You can only use this once per turn for the rabbit. You can only use it once per turn for the Tochinoku. They're two different effects with the same thing. So technically, if you had a rabbit and you had a Tochinoku, uh those can be activated for two summonings in your hand so it's really good and what's even cooler is like if this happened and then they click this one I, I if i recall correctly i'll have the playthrough uh you get another card because they selected it so basically this card will will trigger go onto the gr uh, go into the field this card will go in the graveyard trigger go onto the field and you'll also get another card in your hand which is actually really nice um so yeah so th these combinations so you get two of the rabbits and then three of the danger tochunoku and you can only do it once per turn for each one the psychic wheel uh the psychic cards over here i'm just gonna say psychic tracker and psychic psychic wielder yeah, because that's how you say wheel, right? That's how you spell wheel, right? Wielder? I'm just going to say wielder. Uh, you can summon these right off, special summon these right off the bat if you have a three-star monster on the field. So they're basically just free cards to put on the field, which is really nice. Now, the Phantom Knights of Stained Greaves, if I remember correctly. This one is very interesting. This is the card that is going to help you summon Arc Rebellion. Because this is a card that can get special summon. So whenever you special summon uh, a Phantom Knights card. So hypothetically, say you had this card in your hand. And you summoned uh, you summoned Rusty. You know, Bardish. You summoned Rusty Bardish. Because it's a Phantom Knight and you Link summoned him. You could easily bring this card on the field. And you could change it to a 4 star. 
which is cool. Now, the combination I usually go for here is being able to have the Phantom Knights of Shade Brigadine as a trap and also have this in my hand already. If you have this combination already set up, you're able to go into Arc Rebellion. And Arc Rebellion is an absolutely amazing card where it's all the all the monsters on the field. If you use the spell, um, it, it accumulates all the damage output. So you could literally do a one shot. If you have not seen our one shot video, definitely be sure to check it out. I mean, I've done 19,000 damage uh, attacks because of it, so on and so forth. But you can literally get a one shot kill because of this. It's really good. But the, the idea would be you would have the trap card. You would have this card. You would you would set the trap, and if there's no trap cards in your graveyard, you can instantly activate it. And because it's a special summoning, you can easily bring this out. So it's a four star with a four star. You basically do the uh, the XZ summoning for it. You can summon Raider's Knight, and then from Raider's Knight, you can go into Arc Rebellion. And then after that, you can activate, you could get more monsters on the field, get as many monsters as you can, tally up the damage output, and then do Arc Rebellion, and then go for the kill. Uh, so you could do combinations like that, which is really nice. So Stain Greaves goes really good with that type of combination. Also, if this is in the graveyard, say by, you know, Tough Luck or whatever, you can special summon another monster. You can special summon another Phantom Knight that's in your hand, place it on the field, and change that to a four star. So it's pretty cool. You could do a few, a few, a, a, you know, a decent amount of rad things to kind of make this happen. Uh, so that's a really cool card. I definitely love that. This card is really good for like continuing your assault on getting more cards out. Um, then you could do Monster Reborn. Say if one of your monsters that uh, that were really good that you wanted, or if you wanted to take another enemy's monster that, that was very powerful, you can steal it. Uh, you know, reinforcement of the army, add a four or lower warrior monster from your deck to your hand. So, you know, depending on what you've consumed, if you consumed a normal summon, or if you want to do a special summon, you don't have any monsters yet, and you want to start the match out with this guy, you can do that, or so on and so forth you can decide emergency uh teleport is a is a brooks is basically it's a a deck searching card where it allows you to get tracker or wielder any of these two cards just right off your hand easily which is amazing cool by the grave like i said you could use this to negate some of the effects like uh like maxi any card that goes to the graveyard you can if if uh if a player activates a card that um you know they placed on the field but it was a monster effect like say it was a monster but the monster is also in the graveyard you can select that monster and then negate that um this phantom knight's wing when it's in the graveyard is a summoning you can summon a phantom knight's card uh monster from your graveyard but also you can prevent one of your strong monsters from taking uh from getting killed on the first attack and it also gives 500 uh damage so this is really good uh so if they have a little more attack power you can protect them or if they're gonna get uh attacked you know on their first time they won't get killed so this is a really good card we already discussed this with the combination to go to arc rebellion uh and then obviously these continuous traps these continuous traps are really good so if they have hypothetically if they had a really strong monster with special effects that were ridiculous and uh it said you know cannot be destroyed by card or battle or something like that you can do a combination of like putting this fog blade on that card and it would not get you know it wouldn't have the special effects anymore but you can't attack it directly but you can use this card the phantom knights of break sword use its special ability to discard one of the xyz cards then target one of your spell cards destroy that and then destroy the monster that was a problem and because you use that fog blade card on that monster um you can actually destroy it 
So it's a very cool technique to use, guys. Definitely keep in mind of doing that. It's a really nice special ability. Uh, let's get into some of these special cards, uh, some of the extra deck stuff, because it's really nice and amazing. Like I said, usual normal flow is you go for the summoning for Cherubini into Rusty. That allows you to discard two cards in the graveyard so you can do more cool stuff. And then after that, you can also get a trap card once you get up to Rusty. And then if you do the Link Summoning with the Arrow, you're able to destroy one of your uh, enemy's monsters, which is really nice. So if you're on the second turn and you get Rusty out, you're able to do that where whatever monster is a problem, obviously you have to read the card accordingly, it destroys that card. Um, so if it says it cannot be destroyed by a card effect or whatever, you just have to be a little mindful. Uh, try to see if you can kind of like, uh, you know, do a little combination, kind of how we mentioned with Break Sword. Or if you see, if you deal with a card like that, you could use potentially Nightmare Unicorn to kind of like put that card, if it was a really special card that was summoned and done some crazy stuff, you could use Nightmare Unicorn, which you summon three monsters uh, to Link Summon uh, to basically return that monster to, uh, to the deck. And I think you discard one card in the process because of it. But it's it's well worth the price. Uh, so there's that. Now, the combination I really like doing is getting Laver the Sea Dragon out. Laver the Sea Dragon basically takes two monsters to summon. So whatever two monsters you have. And then whatever monster you have banished already. Because like hypothetically say you use this card to put another monster in your hand. That's why it's really nice to get this card in the graveyard first. Because then if you go for Laver, you can summon this back out. So it'd be you'll have three monsters on the field. Then you can like, you know, maybe special summon this monster, Silent Boots. Because there's a Phantom Knights on the field. So on and so forth. And now you... You would have two monsters to do another xyz summon where you can now or xz summon and you can get the phantom knights of break sword out with these two combinations uh you can basically now go into number fo utopic future which then will lead to utopic draco now you always try to go for the end over here you always try to go for draco here but if you went up to here you can hit a monster of theirs and take it for one turn which is really cool. But if you go for this, if you go all the way up to right after you go up to this, you could instantly go to this. There's no problem with it. Um, there's no difficulty on doing that. No requirements once you get to this point. Uh, once you go to Utopic Draco, what you can do is every time they use a special ability or special effect from a monster and it's on the field, you can negate it and then take that card. Um, you can also negate other effects from monsters and stuff like that. I try to I try to wait to see if it's on the field. I'm still learning the decks and stuff, but this is really strong. And you'll have up to three chances to be able to do that once per turn. Uh, just keep in mind that you can only do it once per turn. So you have to know the enemy's deck to know when you're going to be able to stop it to to really make it worth the wild um so that's why i love doing uh so if you ever go for lever phantom break uh phantom knight of breaksword then you're gonna eventually lead into going into draco because then you're gonna summon this guy and then summon this guy uh we already discussed how to get arc rebellion it's the combination of this trap card with stained greaves um, because you need a four star monster to kind of make that happen. Uh, if you don't have anything for any chance on the first uh, turn to make something good happen, I usually go with bamboozling and just put it in defense mode. And if a monster effect uh, triggers, uh you can basically detach the two materials to negate the activation this is a good way to be defensive on the start if you don't have anything to work with to go that far down the route um say you got three trap cards and like two two monster cards or one monster card and one spell card and you can't really work with anything hypothetically like call to the grave um yeah, you would try to your best to just basically go for a defensive route in that case. It's not often that ha that happens. Usually, I'm able to go and chain like crazy. But in Phantom Knight's deck realm, that's like the equivalent of a brick. Um, that's the that's the worst way of what can happen. I haven't used number 86 that much um, because 
I would want to go for the plus four route. The only way I could go for a plus four route is during the second turn because you need to use the combination of Phantom Knight of Breaksword. So the other way that you can go for Arc Rebellion is you can actually destroy this card in battle by using its special effect, selecting the card and then selecting a monster. And then when it goes into the graveyard, you can activate its ability and it makes two monsters two phantom knight monsters that are in the graveyard they have to be two phantom knight monsters in the graveyard in order for this to trigger and you say yes and then you could put those two monsters that are in the graveyard on the field as four stars so with the combination of those as a four star and then phantom knights of shade brigadine and then the phantom knights of uh stain greaves those are going to be four monsters, and then you're going to be able to use the number 86 uh, four-star skill. Uh, that would be the way you would do a four-plus monster combination. I've never really used it in this deck, to be honest. Um, I always went Ultimate Draco or Arc Rebellion. That's uh, Those are the more reasonable routes. And then after that, like you could do other combinations like Nightmare Unicorn. You can uh, discard a card and return a card from that a person has that is very difficult to the deck like that's really nice if it comes down to it or you could use access code talker which i've done a few times in the beginning where uh you can go from nightmare unicorn to access code talker where as long as you have another extra monster to do a four star link you could do this and then what happens is you can uh dismantle or you can uh uh unchain nightmare unicorn from it and because it's a three-star monster it's going to be it's going to add a thousand damage for each link so it's going to be three so it's going to make this a 5300 monster uh so and then there's also a combination something where if you activate it you can destroy yeah you can banish one link monster from your field or graveyard destroy one card your opponent controls also for the rest of the turn you cannot banish masters with the same attribute of access code talker but yeah you can you can do some really cool combinations where you could also destroy one monster one one thing that your opponent has uh so definitely cool to have access code talker in the deck uh i haven't used appaloosa uh bow of the goddess too much um but it's not bad because like for a four star link each card that you link gives 800 attack to it so it goes up to 8 16 24 32 but that's not really the best thing about it the best thing about it is that you can make the card lose 800 attack and if you do you negate an activation of a monster effect so it's actually really nice uh if you start knowing what cards you're your what deck you're dealing with uh but this is basically the entire setup guys of this uh stuff i'm sorry that i spoke a lot uh, but i do love giving a full breakdown of all the cards and combinations i'm gonna do some playthroughs if you haven't seen the other youtube videos of our uh what is it called our dual links definitely be sure to check those out i just didn't want to rehash them on this video i wanted to put two new videos uh they were actually annoying matches but i felt like they were worth showing when you're not able to go down the route that you want but i hope you guys check out the video i hope you guys subscribe and i'll catch you guys next time peace see you guys <laughs> all right let's do the next one fam let's see what's up let's go second this time let's go second so you guys can see what's going on here Usually going first is the optimal route, but I want to show Phantom Knights going second. I think it would be cool. It's not a bad hand. It's not a bad hand. We need another card. Jesus. They gave us all the reserves. Okay. Which card do we want to have in our deck? I'm leaning towards that.
So first things first, I'm going to do this. I'm waiting. He obviously has something in his hand right now. Of each type. That's a continuous trap. Select the card to send to the graveyard. Uh, we already sent that to the graveyard. I would like... To send this to the graveyard. I'm gonna, this is gonna be trippy. This is gonna be tri trippy. What do I want in my hand? So if I do, One second, fam. Because he's saying of each type that we're currently in dark. He's, he's messing with us. So he thinks he can mess with us, but he's not going to mess with us. not going to mess with us. Yes. Discard one card from your hand. This 
Sorry, bro. So now we gonna get it started. This is for the future. I would lean more towards this. Yes. Not right now. Yep. Oh, is he angry? Is he angry? Did, did we just foil his plans? Did he get mad that we we we, we took out his his trap? <laughs> He's I'm like, yo, you trying to make us do some formulas here? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Just to show you what the real world is like, bro. Stop staying stuck in Yu-Gi-Oh. <laughs> All right. So, let's see what hand we get today. Okay, so we're going first. Let's see, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna wait. Now the thing for me is like, I feel like I should go straight up into uh i just straight up go into just like you know draco just go straight into draco there's nothing i could do with the cherubini flow like by besides putting more stuff into the thing i could but if i go that route i won't be able to go draco i don't think currently because i'll be able to put one card in the field but I won't be able to put another one. That's the concern. We'll do it though. Let's see what's up. So first things first here, we're gonna do this. What card do we want to be have in the graveyard? Usually you would wanna go for one of these. Because you want to get a card right away to kind of continue doing combos. Um, but with what we have available, I think I can get away with having something else. So I think I could do this first. Because if I banish it, then um, that would be amazing. So let's see. But what Phantom Knight would we have? Yeah, we'd have two of them. We should be able to do this. Let's let's make it happen, guys. Let's make it. Or I could go, instead of this route, I could go to try to build this. But I would need to have a Phantom Knight to summon. Which I, prob I will in a second. We can go Arc Rebellion route. We can go Arc Rebellion, because when I summon Rusty uh, with another card, I'll be able to have that. But, let's go Draco. Let's make something happen. Here we go. I'm going to want to do that. Let's activate this. Let's see what we get rid of. Nope. Yep, we're gonna summon both of them now. One. Yes. Cancel. We're gonna summon this one. And now we're gonna summon Rusty. Rusty. 
I could... No. Yes, it's gonna count as two. It's fine. So now because we summon Rusty, we should be able to discard another card. Can I negate that? Can I negate that with another negate? Why can't I Ash Blossom and Ash Blossom? It went in the graveyard. You see, that's what I was worried about. I don't have anything to get from there. I could do this. It would have been a safer route to go uh, for Arc Rebellion, but let's continue going. I'm going to go defensive now because he messed up the combo. Now let's see what happens. Waiting to see what he's doing. He's taking a while. No, 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 no. Not this, oh, not this crappy deck. If this card battle inflict 2,000 damage to your opponent once per turn. I would like to send this to the graveyard. I mean, I'm thinking about... Not be destroyed by battle or card effects. I need this. Yep. Because the thing is, I need to... I definitely need to trap it somehow. Special summon. 
Or... Here we go. Okay, so. Yep. Cancel that. Gonna bring this guy out. Now we're gonna do Phantom Knights. Break Sword. The placement is important, so Rusty can trigger. Let's see if we could get Rusty to do his thing. Yes. Cancel. It does not work. All right, so... I can do this. I didn't want to do this, but I'm going to do it. I didn't want to do this. We're going to die. Yes. Now we're going to do this. I mean, if we went to this, we only go up to four. Unaffected by card effects. So it's still insufficient based on the amount of attack we need to do. So I'm going to go Arc Rebellion. Oh, he got mad already. He he didn't really want to deal with part of that. He didn't he didn't want to deal with that. <laughs> okay. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know about this uh this channel tell them to come and hang out come join us on discord you will not regret it it's the best community slash family ever it says it right there on the freaking board yo thank you guys so much 
for hanging out. I love you guys so much, and I will catch you guys next time. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next, what you think about the video, and so on. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.